Ranking these is going to be tough when I'm done. This is the second one I ever owned and was my favorite for a long, long time. And it's still one of the absolute best. Fusion Reborn was a genius move. Bringing Goku, while still dead, back into the mix, including fan favorites like PyCon and a bunch of fun cameos. You have Space Hitler and Frieza, and actual Hitler who is made into a comedic joke and it gets absolutely wrecked by heroes. That's pretty funny. And I guess they changed the animation in that segment to lighten it. Goten and Trunks and Gotenks are used perfectly in that moment. It's just a creative, unique, fun-spirited adventure fantasy with some dark twist, of course. Janemba in his first form is an infant bred from evil, representing nothing but selfish desire and a childlike demeanor. It's deceiving, but terrifying. He's funny, he's cute, he's weird, and he's somewhat disturbing. But his second form is evil incarnate. Having a bit of Frieza, Cooler, Cell, and Deborah in him implied makes him a force to be reckoned with. Given the situation, that's all it needs. I'm not going to attempt to break down the metaphysics or theology of DBZ's afterlife, but it's an interesting setting for a movie that is used to near full effect. As per usual, the runtime would have allowed for some of the finer points to be fleshed out if it was longer, and given Gohan more to do since there were all those fun cameos. Where's Broly in this scenario? We see Bojack, we see other, like like the Ginyu Force. There's so many other encounters that could have happened that could have been fun for Gohan in particular. But instead we get a very effective brief moment where he one-shots Frieza and it scares all the other villains away and he does it in normal form. And of course, the titular fusion itself is too short-lived, but suitably epic for what it is. However, it's pretty amazing how much world building, humor, action, and character they shove into this. I'm not kidding you that this is probably the funniest DBZ film. PyCon is a real standout. I laughed out loud at almost all the jokes, even the fart ones. And he's a character I hope they bring back into the fold somehow, because there's just a ton they can do with him. The fights and the battles are incredibly choreographed and beautifully animated, and any scene with Super Saiyan 3 is going to be biased in my opinion, as that's my favorite Super Saiyan form, arguably. And the transformation here, chill inducing. Sean Schimmel's voice acting is on another level, and the following encounter battle is so dang cool. There's another crazy amount of depth here that comes from the welcome return of Vegeta. His death is a favorite moment of mine, Final Atonement, and his struggle with accepting his fate after the knowledge that he could have been good, but he chose not to be as powerful. His line about everything being hell has such a poignancy to it, and the thematic resonance still sticks with me to this day. To see Vegeta lay down his pride again for the sake of the world, and willingly return to his damnation is poetic. This is a vital part of his arc. Vegeta caused hell, Vegeta was hell, Vegeta is in hell, and now experiences hell as his only existence. His death wish to no longer exist if he dies again is painfully honest, but his choice to return to it instead is bold and admirable. It makes it all the better when his triumphant return comes in the TV show. And I could unpack this for days, the philosophy around it. It's very subtle commentary here on the price of sin, paying for it. And I know it's not canon with Super now, but back in the day, this was a big part of why it played out so well towards the end of the series. It feels so vital. I'll add that Goku's warmth to someone who has spent his whole life either trying to kill him, mock him, or surpass him only to call him friend and smile them smile at each other is actually pretty touching. Vegeta has not only accepted his fate, but is willingly paying for what he's done because he's a changed man because of Goku and his friends. I forgot to talk about canon, so let me add that really quickly. This one's pretty easy to place in the canon. Probably most likely during that time where Majin Buu is with Hercule, resting, chilling with the dog. Uh, even though Hercule's in this movie, it's only over the course of one day. So it's not hard to buy given how Majin Buu sleeps that he was sleeping during this event. And Hercule went out into the city for whatever he needed. And, or you could place it sometime during season seven when Goku's in other worlds. But given he mentions Majin Buu, season eight is more likely. Given how vital it is to Vegeta's arc, like I mentioned, in this specific timeline of DBZ. It may not be canon with Super, but it's definitely canon to this era. If it isn't in your mind, you should definitely consider it to be. Fusion Reborn ultimately is just DBZ movies at the height of their fun factor. It's a rare form that pretty much lands in any conceivable area, whether it's humor, action, story, character development, lore, world building, whatever you want, it has it. It could be longer to do a little bit more, but it's infinitely rewatchable and one of the absolute best. I'd wish we'd get more of these other world stories. I give Dragon Ball Z Fusion Reborn five out of five stars. Perhaps you could take some clips from GT where all the villains come back. 
and throw them in here. That'd be kind of cool as like a fan film to make it a little bit longer to get some of those encounters. Who knows, maybe I'll do it one day. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate your views so much, so, so much. Stay tuned for more content coming soon. Smash that like button. It's such a YouTube saying, isn't it? And please subscribe. Remember, always look for the good.